Mm -hmm. And so when we work with, with clients, we have to identify what their unique needs are, and we can't provide everything. We don't claim to be the physicians or the mental health providers. And Do you so, verify that they're here in this country legally or not? No. No, actually, we don't really check status of our clients. So th there are people who come to the programs for various reasons. So that's an important point. Okay. Okay, and I, want, I just want to repeat it because I'm sure the audience is kind of interested in this. Mm -hmm. There is no effort made on the part of International Institute, which is kind of a member-supported entity, to do any kind of QC on the paperwork of anybody that comes. You just help. We just help. So you're safe ground mm -hmm. for anybody. Right. As well as we are, because Jewish Family Service is a resettlement agency as well. So we all follow the same, um, I think, we, we ha share the same core values. So there wouldn't be any reason for someone in this country, even if they're being here legally is in process, <laughs> which is true for quite mm -hmm. a few, or whether it's actually they're here legally right now, wouldn't be any reason that they couldn't come to you for help right now mm -hmm. without any downside at all. Right. Do you ever talk with people that haven't come for six months because they were afraid? Hmm. Well, I think that happened so after 9-11. Right. Uh, yeah. People were worried that, that uh, if they were to come speak up and get help that they might be deported. Um, but generally the community knows that our agencies are the safe places. We don't have uniforms. We don't have any visible law well, enforcement This nation there. is a long way away from the internment of the Japanese at the beginning of World War II after Pearl Harbor, which mm -hmm. was an across-the-board move made against a specific demographic group that really hadn't been found guilty of any treason. That was the last time that happened. Mm -hmm. So this country doesn't really follow that course anymore. It's a good thing if you learn the story of the people that had their homes taken. And mm -hmm. But we also saw a decline in the number of people that were being brought into the country by the American government. So it's really only now that we are starting to see more people being resettled. How, how do immigrants and refugees feel about America when they get here? Do, I mean, you know, I, I don't mean this as a joke or anything, no. but even Canadians come down and they love the malls. They're like, wow, I mean, all this in one place, I and mean, you know, it's as far as you could walk practically to go shopping. I mean, what are their impressions about America when they come? I think that it runs the gamut from, oh my God, I'm scared to death, to, oh my God, thank God I'm in America. And then it moves in between. I think the, mm -hmm. the children, you know, it's a new thing. They adapt very quickly many of the kids. Um, for senior immigrants and refugees, it's more of a challenge. It's more of learning the language. It's more of figuring out what's going on, maneuvering through a system, taking a bus, going grocery shopping, going to a doctor. Parents, you know, it's hard as well. Um, we have challenges, I think, in the schools where a teacher calls up a parent and their child is interpreting what the teacher is saying, and it could be that, you know, Little Johnny. I think it depends on when a person is uh, here, what, how long they've been here right. in terms of how they feel about America. And I talked to clients who've been here 10 years. I was with them when they first started. Right. They didn't so much like life here for the first couple of years. It's tough. Now they're okay. very thankful. We live in an economic climate today. We're bashing America and its future as an economic powerhouse. It's still the strongest economy in the world, by the way. <laughs> for all of its failings. Mm -hmm. It's always amazing to me that the American people are unhappy with the Chinese per capita income of $700 a person right now up from three. I mean, it, goodness gracious, you know, they're far from very, very wealthy. But uh, for um, America with all of its problems, ever see somebody that said, I'm getting out of here, I don't like it, I'm going back home? Mm -hmm. Do you ever see that? There are too? some who have a hard time adjusting, especially the elderly. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there are some who prefer to go back, and don't forget that a lot what of them. What percentage would you say? Just say it. America didn't work for me. Uh, oh, two. How many lost customers? Very do we low. Have? Very low. Two percent. You know, the other 2%. thing is, um, there are some people coming into that we're bringing into the country, or who have been here for a while, who have developed certain types of health problems, and their family members then shun them because it's. A disease that is just not acceptable in that culture and so I have had a senior who had HIV and wanted to go back to his country of origin because he was not being treated well by his family in fact they 
sort of pushed him out. So I think that there are a lot of challenges. And again, bringing back full circle, it's around health care and mental health. And also when you adjust, you go through stages. Right. First, you're confused, you're afraid. You're, part of you is happy because you, now you're in a safe place, but the adjustment makes you more worried and afraid. So you have mixed emotions. Then you start adjusting and you might like what you're being exposed to or the new life, or you might not and decide you wanna go back. Some of them go back, but if you stick around, most of them adjust to the new life and are torn between the two uh, countries want the best out of it yeah. and most of them end up staying because it's on the long run better. Can I interject that I think that I see two reasons why our clients have gone back. One is that peace, peaceful times are being seen again in their home country mm -hmm. and that's all they wanted was to live in their home country in peace. So they mm -hmm. can go back and they do. The other is that it's unresolved mental health issues. Um, when, when we've had clients who cannot find satisfaction here and cannot find a way to live here. It's generally because they are over, overcome with mental health uh, stressors and just can't find happiness and they, want, they just want to go home because that's where they remember being comfortable. And some of them have actually gone back to very dangerous situations mm -hmm. because they just felt they needed to get back to where their faith is, to where their home is. Um, it's not really something you can explain other than I'm um, just needing to get back to center and our Western mental health system isn't, isn't working for them. Hmm. About how long does it take the average immigrant or refugee to be comfortable with America's health care system? Again, I think it depends on if there's a specific reason why they need to engage with the system. Um, if it's for general health care, you know, and they're able to navigate that, it's fine. But if it's something more serious with either the parent or the child, then it becomes much more difficult. It depends on their own literacy level. Mm -hmm. It depends on whether they're coming from an urban environment in their home country where they might be familiar with, with Western medicine. Um, if they're healthy or not. It depends on the skill level of the provider as well. There right. are some incredibly talented providers here who use interpreters, who are comfortable with the bicultural issues, who, who understand um, the health issues of other cultures. And then there are some who, who, who aren't very talented. And so that has a very big impact on the success of a patient's um, health care experience here. So we work very closely with health care providers, mm -hmm. with mental health clinics, the hospitals, um, encouraging them to have cultural competency plans, use interpreters, and learn about the cultures. Well, Americans, uh, all immigrants and refugees have built America. It's a wonderful country. And of course, medical matters for everyone here. Thanks for joining us. For more Medical Matters television shows, go online to medicalmatters.tv.